What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we're finally going to use all the topics we've learned so far and we're going to make a start of our mini blog in Symfony. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. We're not going to apply validation, middlewares and so on, but we're simply going to focus on CRUD functionalities. For developers that are pretty new to coding and have no idea what CRUD is, let me briefly explain it. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete, which are the four primary operations that web applications most commonly provide on a resource. If we think about a blog, you can create a new post, you can read the post, you can update a post and you can also delete a post. In this video, we're primarily going to focus on reading stuff from the database. I don't want to spend too much time on creating a complete front-end application, so I have done that before I recorded the video. I will share the GitHub link down below where you will find Tailwind code, with HTML of course, for the front-end part. I've also got it open inside a browser, so let's navigate to Google Chrome. And right here, we must know by now that views are stored inside a template folder, so let's open it. And before we focus on the movies folder that I also have right here, let's quickly open the base.html.twig file. Whether you have installed my previous video where we installed Tailwind or not, I have added a CDN, as you can see right here, of Tailwind CSS, so don't worry about your Tailwind part. I've also created a responsive navbar, so I've added Alpine CDN on the line below, right here, that works perfectly fine with Tailwind. Besides that, I've also created three blocks in my main content. One is for my header, right here, we have a block called header. We got a second block, which is down below, right here, which is for the body. So the actual content of our pages will be right here. And the third block is our footer, right here, which will just simply print out a copyright at the bottom. Now let's navigate to the top of this page, because GitHub gives us an option to copy the entire file. Right at the right side of your GitHub, you will find a couple icons. Now let's click on the second one, which will copy raw content. So what we can do then is navigate back to our code editor, because we're going to replace the entire base.html.twig file that we have with the content that we just copied. So let's select everything and paste it right there. Scroll to the top and that's done. So let's save it and close off the file. The next thing that we need to do is to create our new movies folder that we have. Let me show it to you right here. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Inside the templates folder, let's create a new folder called movies. And this is a structure that you got to get used to. If you're going to work with a certain endpoint, like we're going to do with movies, just create a movies folder and add all pages that belong to the movies endpoint in here. I've already explained the CRUD operations. So let's simply create four files in here. So let's right click, let's say new file. The first one will be the index.html.twig file. We need a second one, so let's create a new file. And this page will basically show one specific post or movie to a user, which can be done by saying show.html.twig. So the index page will show all movies that we have in the database and the show method will show one single movie. A user has the opportunity to create a new movie review. So let's create a new file and let's give it the name of create.html.twig. Finally, we got a page where a user can edit a movie. So let's do the same thing. One more file called edit.html.twig. You might wonder what the delete page might be since it's also an operation in CRUD, but we only need to add a delete button that will delete one single post. Now let's quickly copy paste all the pages that we have inside GitHub. All right, let's open the movies folder. And let's just start off at the top with our create.html.twig file. Let's copy the content inside of it. Navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Open the create.html.twig, paste it inside of it, save it, and let's just close it off. Now let's do it one more time. Let's copy the edit.html.twig file, copy the content, open the edit, paste it, save it, and close it off. There are two more left, so navigate back, copy the index page, navigate back to Visual Studio Code, and paste it right here, save it, close it off. Now one more time, open the show, copy the content, navigate back, 
paste it in, save it, and close it off. Now the routes obviously don't work anymore inside our project, since we've moved all pages inside a movies folder. Let's start off with the index.html.twig file, which will be the forward slash movies endpoint. Let's open the movies controller that we have, and we already have one route defined, which is forward slash movies, and it's returning a view to index.html.twig. Now the route that we have is alright, because it's forward slash movies, and the name is movies, which is completely fine right now. The render method looks inside the templates folder, but not further than that. So what we need to do is to add movies right in front of it, and add a forward slash. If we save it, let's navigate back to the browser, let's go to our local host, and let's refresh it. And right here, you will see the index.html.twig file. The data that is currently being showed is still static. So let's fix that up. So we somehow need to make a database call, right? So let's think about that for a second. We want to interact with our movies table inside the database. So what do we need to do? First off, we need to make sure that we connect with our movies repository. So what we can do is to go to Visual Studio Code and create a new private property called movie repository. Let's also define a constructor right below of it. So public function, double underscore construct. And let's add the movies repository that we have defined inside our repository folder as an argument. So let's say movie repository, let's pull it in, object called movie repository. What we can do inside our constructor is saying that every time the movies controller is being called, assign our movie repository that we have right here to the private property that we got that is only accessible inside the movies controller. That can be done by saying this movie repository is equal to the movie repository as an argument. So variable movie repository. So what's next? We should be able to retrieve all movies right now that we have inside the database. So inside the index method, we're currently doing nothing actually. We're just rendering a view. What we can do is to go right above our return method and define a new variable called movies. And let's grab the movies repository that we have with a keyword. This, because it's gonna search for a property in this file called movie repository. And we're going to chain one more method right here called find all. What the find all method does is searching for all movies that we have inside our movie table. Before we send our movies back to the front end, let's double check if this works. Right below our variable movies, let's create a DD to die dump our variable movies. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, the database returned an array with two rows, which we will check out later on. Now there are two possible ways on how you could send data back to the view. The first one is adding our variable that we have right here called movies right inside of the render method. Now the second method is just returning this piece of code that we have right here and removing the variable movies. For demonstration purposes, let's just return back our variable movies. So let's remove the DD. As we've seen in the output, let me show it one more time. We've got an array right here. So we need to make sure that we return an array to the view. Right after our first argument inside the render method, Let's add a comma, space, and we're going to send back an array. So let's say a set of brackets. Right here, we need to make sure that we define a key value pair. The key will be accessible in the view, while the value will be the movies variable that we got. So let's say single quotes, movies, and the key is variable movies that we have. What we also could have done, and it's completely up to yourself, is returning this piece of code right here, instead of variable movies, then you can simply delete this line and you don't need a semicolon. This works fine. For demonstration purposes, I'll just stick to this method because it's a little bit easier for beginners to understand what's going on. Now the array that we just passed through should be accessible through the view. So if we save it and open the index.html.twig file, we should replace static content right here with values from the movie array. Keep in mind that we can simply define movies or blog posts inside our view like this. If we save it, navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh the page, you'll see that an error message is thrown since we're trying to access an array right here as a string. So what we got to do is creating a loop as a single movie item. So let's navigate back, 
let's remove what we have right here. And I've also added comments for every block item. So let's actually delete two of them because we only need one. So let's delete this one as well. So let's create a loop right below our block item comment. Let's write down for and hit tab, which creates a for each loop for us. We're going to loop inside our movies array as one single movie. Now let's copy the end for loop. All right, let's go to the bottom in between the two closing divs and paste it right here. Now I don't like the alignment, so let's select everything inside our loop. All right, and let's hit tab. This looks fine. Now this doesn't work because you can see that Avengers and the paragraph tag are still static. So let's replace the content that we have right here. Now let's start at the top with our image path. So let's remove everything inside of it, add twig snippets and write down movie since we're looping over the entire array and every item will be one single movie. And we're going to print it out, which can be done by writing down dot as image path. Now the same thing needs to be done for the H2, which will be the title. So let's add curly braces. Let's access the movie dot title. Now let's keep the span that we have as it is, since that will be something for one of the next videos where we will be focusing on authorization and we will add a middleware all around our movies. Then we get our paragraph tag right here, which will basically be the content or the description. So let's remove the lorem ipsum text, add twig snippets, say movie.description. And that should be it. Let's save it. Let's navigate back to the browser and let's refresh it. And as you could see, two movies have been printed out coming from our database. Now let's add one more functionality right here. I do want to see how many movies we got inside our loop. If you're familiar with PHP, you know that you can use the count method. I've told you before that Twig is extremely powerful. So let me show you what I mean with that. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's scroll to the top right inside of our H1, add a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we're going to use some Twig syntax. So let's add Twig snippets. And in order to count the values of an array, we simply need to write down the array name, which will be movies, add a pipe, which allows you to perform all types of actions. What we need is the word length. During this course, we will go over some others that you can use as well. But for now, let's save it. Let's navigate back to Chrome, refresh the page. And as you could see, the number two has been added right after our H1 title, meaning that we have two values inside our array. This hasn't anything to do with our CRUD operations yet. Well, technically it has something to do with it. Since we need to read a movie based on the ID, which can only be grabbed in this way. As you could see, both posts have a read button right here. Keep reading. This is the R of the CRUD operation, since we're going to read one single post. When you want to read one specific post, you basically need to add a route parameter since the post might change based on the movie you have clicked on. The first step that we need to take is changing up the href in our answer. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see our keep reading button right here. And I've only added forward slash block forward slash. Let's change this up to forward slash movies forward slash, where we're going to add something that's unique to the movie row. In our case, it will be the actual ID. So what we can do is add blade snippets inside of it, say movie, Dot ID. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh the page, click on keep reading of the dark night, you'll see that the endpoint does not exist, which is all right, but the ID is one. Navigate back, open the Avengers, you'll see that the ID is number two. Now we're currently getting an error message that the route does not exist, which is all right. So let's fix that as well. Let's navigate back to the code editor and let's open our movie controller. All right, because we're going to create a new method that will show this specific page of one single post. What we actually can do is duplicating the method that we have right here. So let's just do that. All right, and let's start off with the annotations. Right here, it's going to forward slash movies. That's all right, but we need to add the route parameter. So let's say forward slash curly brace ID. There's one more thing that we need to add right here, which is the methods. 
colon brackets and the value is get because we're going to perform a get request since we're getting values from the database. This can actually be applied to the index method as well. So let's copy it and add it right in front of name. All right. Now let's scroll down again. This ID that we're having right here will change over time that we need to grab inside the method. So let's say dollar sign ID. It's still the index method. So let's change this up to the show method. We still need a response, which is all right, but we're not going to grab all movies anymore, but one single movie based on the ID. Now the method that we're chaining at our movie repository is defined all, which is not correct when you want to get one single value. So let's remove all, but the find method accepts a parameter, which will be the ID you want to search for. In our case, it will be variable ID that we have right here as an argument inside our show method, which will crumb from the endpoint right here. All right, we're almost done. Since we're not going to render the index view, but the show view. We're also not sending back multiple movies, but one single movie. All right, let's navigate back to the browser. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, the endpoint works, but the content is still static. So let's change that up real quick. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open the show.html.twig method, and let's scroll to the top. Now we don't need to create a loop right here since we got an object of one row and not multiple. So what we can do is simply replacing Joker with curly braces, movie, dot title. We're not going to change the h2 yet and also not the small paragraph. Scroll down. We have the image, so let's change that up to movie.imagepad. We have multiple paragraphs, but let's just remove two and let's change up the lorem ipsum that we have right here to movie.description. Now this should do the trick for us. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh the page, you'll see that the page has been changed to Avengers Endgame, the image is correct, and the description has been added as well. Let's go back to our movies page one more time. Let's click on the keep reading button of the Dark Knight. And as you can see, the Dark Knight's page has been printed out as well. This was it for this video where I showed you how you can output all movies that we got inside the database on the screen followed with one single post as well. In the next video, we will be focusing on the other operations, which are the update and delete operations. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.